Hello everyone, and welcome to The Mess. My name is Jake, also known as Plant Gay for Life, and this video is going to be a six-month update of my IKEA terrarium cabinets. All right, guys, so it's been about six months since I've transformed my IKEA cabinet into a full-blown terrarium. I have a part one where I talk about all of the supplies and all the steps and everything on how I created the whole thing, created this whole mess. And then I have a part two, which is the initial tour. Now, for those of you who have seen the part two tour, you might look at this and be like, oh, it looks different. A lot of things have come out. A lot of new things have gone in. It has changed over the course of this summer. This is going to be a video where I am talking about the pros, the cons, things I've learned along the way, things I would do differently, things I would not do, all that stuff. So, let me get my notes. All right, so changes made. So probably the biggest change, not really a change, but more of an add-on per se, is that I've added a water absorbing mat at the bottom because my cabinet, it leaks a little bit. The actual cabinet doesn't leak, but the condensation actually leaks a little bit through the space in between the cabinet itself and these doors. And the reason there's that little space and it's not fully closed is because I didn't drill a hole for my cords because I'm a little bit too scared of that. <laughs> but if you drill a hole for your cords and you probably won't even have this problem, but because I have a big fat core on top here that the cabinet literally has to close on top of and I have weather stripping that closes up all the big gaps and everything. So it's a little bit, crazy DIY, a little bit of a crazy modification, but I'm just a little bit too, I'm a little bit too scared of like drilling a hole because I've seen those videos where the glass just goes Psh! But that has been great. So the little bit of water that trickles at the bottom and that pools up, it basically is non-existent because I have this water absorbing mat. I think it's just like a, uh, like a bath mat or something that I got off Amazon and uh, it gets the job done. Or actually, no, I, it's it's one of those ones that you put like um, like at your door. So like when it's raining or if it's snowy outside and you come in, you wipe your feet and it absorbs all the water and stuff. You know, like when you walk, to... anyway. So <laughs> anyone who has a house in the Northeast knows that it's either rainy as hell, windy as hell, cold as hell, hot as hell, snowy as hell. So yeah, we got all the different weather and climates and the seasons and all that stuff. So we bring a lot of dirt and mud and all that stuff into our home. So it's one of those mats that you rub your feet on. You know what I'm saying? So let's get to the pros. Probably the biggest pro is the fact that it has made plant care so much easier for me, guys. When I tell you, I haven't counted recently, but when I first put it together, I had roughly 50 plants in here not including all the moss. You know, I got some selaginella here. I got some cuttings of some things. I have one of the, what's this hairy boy? He's, he's a, uh, is it a Piper v Velosa? V Velosa, anyway, it's something really cool and gnarly. And uh, I just got a lot of nodes and chunks in here and things that I'm propagating, things that I'm rehabbing. I have all this stuff that was either not pretty enough to be on display, so I had to shove it in my grow tent, but pretty enough where I would like to look at it every day. So now I'm able to do that with this cabinet setup. But if you're watching this video and you love plants like I do, you tend to get into the Pokemon mindset where you gotta collect them all. And it gets very materialistic. I try to not make it materialistic. I try to stay away from trends and fads and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, there still are a lot of plants out there that I really want to have in my collection and grow out. Over the years, I've had to get rid of certain plants because they either got too big for my space or I grew them for a while and I loved them, but I wanted to grow other plants, so I had to make room. I live in a studio apartment, so I don't have a big sunroom I can put everything in. I don't have a greenhouse I can put them all in. One day, maybe I will, but for now, aesthetics is everything. I don't want my place to feel like cluttered with greenery. I don't want to feel like a, a jungle where it's just like, it's overwhelming. I want my plants to look 
aesthetically pleasing. I always use that word aesthetic because I really am about the aesthetics when it comes to my space because this really is my landscaping. This is my indoor garden. This right here is my garden essentially because I don't have an actual piece of land or you know an actual garden. So this is my garden guys. I got 50 different plants in here people but I don't gotta water 50 different pots. I don't gotta care for 50 individual plants. As soon as I get up I just spray it down, that's it. Close the cabinet, bada bing, bada boom, I'm done. I honestly feel like a weight has been lifted off me where I have all these plants and all these cuttings of smaller plants that haven't really grown out yet, or plants like, for example, you know, this guy. Uh, this this anthurium right here, this is Cunaylense cross with Carla Blackiae. Beautiful plant. You know, it's got one kind of ugly leaf that got a little bit sun bleached from the very strong grow light, and I moved it down a little bit, and now it's got this one. So, very pretty in here, but you know, if, if I had this thing like on one of my shelves, it's not really much to look at, guys. When you put all these plants together, they create one beautiful work of art. They make you feel like you're connected with nature in some weird artificial way. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna try to make this into something that it's not. But you know, we as a species have done a very good job at detaching ourselves and removing ourselves from the natural world. I mean, think about how we don't even call ourselves animals. We refer to us as humans and then all the other species are animals and plants, etc., etc when humans, they're part of the animal kingdom. I'm getting a little bit philosophical here, but I think that's the very core of why I'm really into this hobby. Why I love not just growing and collecting plants, but learning about them, educating myself on them. The fact that plants inspire me, the fact that they are up, as soon as the sun comes up, they are up, they are photosynthesizing. They do not hit the snooze button. They are up and at them, they're doing that photosynthesis stuff and they're ready to go. And they don't take a rest day, they don't take an off day, they don't take a sick day, they just go. And their only goal in life is not to be the prettiest plant, not to be a plant that's better looking than the plant next to it. Its only goal is to reach its greatest potential. It's just a great way for me to reconnect with nature in my own little way. I can't just go to the rainforest, even though I am planning a trip to the rainforest. And if I do, I will definitely make a video on that, but you know. We'll see. I guess what I'm trying to say is, guys, is this is my own little piece of paradise. <laughs> this is my little indoor garden. And finally, one of the biggest pros about this terrarium setup is the fact that the aerial roots go bonkers and it makes propagating plants an absolute dream. Let me give you an example. This guy right here is actually a top cut. I just made this top cut, I think last week. I just put it right back into the terrarium and it's still rooting, it's still going crazy. I hate it when they do that because like then the root breaks and then I, I don't like that. But <laughs> This is the top cut. I got the bottom part of the plant growing out in my grow tent. When that's ready to go, I will sell it and make some cha-ching. Okay, let's talk about cons. There are still pest problems in here. Not to the point where it's a nuisance, but I was under the impression that if I'm spraying the plants down constantly every day, every few days, it'll keep washing off the pests. And I would say it does that to a point, but I will still see leaves that have little dots on them and I'm looking at them like, oh, those are spider mites. Oh, those are thrips. I see a little fungus gnat or two flying around in here. Actually, within the first couple of weeks when I created this, I got a fungus gnat outbreak. I'm just remembering right now. And what I had to do was, honestly guys, it was so bad. They were dying on the glass. They were getting stuck on the glass from the condensation, drowning and dying. <laughs> so like the glass and the condensation on the glass was like a fly trap. So what I did to combat that was I took some of that, uh, the mosquito bits, I mixed it up in water, I filtered it so it didn't have any of the bits in it. I put that in my spray bottle and I sprayed the whole terrarium down and that seemed to get rid of them. I haven't really had a huge problem since. I'll see one or two flying around in there throughout the week, but that's pretty much it. I don't really have a problem and they're not a nuisance anymore, so it's all good. One thing that's not really a con, but it's something that I've noticed if you're 
afraid of the creepy crawlies, this might be a red flag. I got a lot of my moss from Central Park and you know, some in the beginning I had some little weeds that I thought looked pretty and I would pluck them and put them in here and stuff. And you know, I've had crickets in here. Just earlier today I saw a, uh, a snail on one of the leaves, like a little tiny snail. There is a spider web over here. If I see a spider in my apartment, like, like the little ones, I'll put them in here, not the big ones. No, if I see a hand crawling on the wall, it's getting the shoe. By the way, I don't have a bug problem in my apartment, thank God. I don't have any cockroaches, no big spiders or anything. Rarely ever get centipedes too, I hate those centipedes. Ooh, they're like little Charlie Chaplin mustaches running across your floor. But yeah guys, we still have pests. There's kind of no way around it, but I will say that the pests are not nearly as bad in here as they are in plants that are out in ambient conditions because the pests can really take over. Whereas I feel the pests can't really find an opportunity to take over in this cabinet because they're constantly being washed away every time I water the terrarium, which is almost every day in the morning. And speaking of watering the terrarium, that is another con. This does require daily spraying on my end. I could put an irrigation system in, and I'm thinking about possibly doing that. I have a friend who has a cabinet who has an irrigation system and she never really waters it manually. So I might do that. I've gone away for four or five days and I've come back and the cabinet's pretty much just fine. A little bit dried out, but nothing critical. And I don't really mind spraying it. I actually kind of like getting in all the nooks and crannies and that's why I decided not to put the irrigation system in because I thought if I just had it spraying from the top the same way every single day, it would miss the little crevices in here and you know, like this plant wouldn't get water, this plant might get water too much. Or so. so I kind of like spraying it down myself, but I'm thinking maybe for those times when I'm away for like a week, maybe I could have an irrigation system in there and just put it on just so that things can stay hydrated enough for like a week or so. That might be something I'll do in the future. We'll just have to see. Another con, and it's a pretty big con for me, is just too small. It's just too small, guys. Especially when it comes to aeroids. Anyone that grows aeroids know that they grow very, very fast. Philodendrons especially, but also even anthuriums. You know, they'll put out a small leaf and then the next month they put out a giant leaf and you're like, whoa! And then that leaf is hogging all the light and then all the plants down here suddenly are shaded and they're not getting as much light. They might not be able to photosynthesize as much as they need to. They might start to get a little bit of root rot or something. Maybe a little bit of fungus or bacteria might start to form and that might cause an issue. So I constantly have to maintain this. Now, if you watched my part one, I talked about how I had individual pots placed in here so that I can take things out. So most of the things in here, most of the big leafed things that you see are not planted in here. They're in pots that are placed in little holders all throughout. And as long as the pot fits into the holder, I can rearrange these however I'd like. The only ones that really don't move is the moss, some of this stuff like Selegionella, the Velosa, and the orchids, because the orchids are the only things that can be this close to the grow light. And that is my final, I think my final con is the grow light situation. Now, depending on what grow light you use, I use this grow light because it was advertised as a waterproof grow light. I don't know if they sell them on Amazon anymore. Last time I checked, they were sold out. Hopefully they're still available if you can't find a waterproof one, but hopefully there's another one out there. I can't imagine this is the only one, but that's the reason I bought it. Very, very powerful grow light. I have it on the lowest setting. It's one of those ones that you can, you turn it and it gets brighter or you can dim it, whatever. But yeah, the orchids are the only ones that can be way up here. No aeroids, no anthuriums can be in this area. But here's the thing guys, it's only this area. Once you get like, like, see how this leaf got kind of bleached here? But this leaf over here is just fine because it's just a little bit off to the side. We're talking four inches, people. This plant over here, this plant was planted up here and it was getting bleached. It was basically yellow. It was getting so bleached. I since took it out, I repotted it, I moved it down here 
now it, it, it's putting out these beautiful, lush, not dark green leaves, but just a nice vibrant green leaf right there. That's an Anthurium hybrid, and it makes all the difference. I had a begonia that I took out. It was that begonia bike. It was that spiky one. Uh, it wasn't doing very well. I took it out. I'm currently rehabbing it. It's growing out, so it's alive, <laughs> but I have to grow it back out because it was here. It was doing well. As I was reorganizing stuff, I was like, okay, let me put you over here. I put it over there. It wasn't getting as much light as it wanted to, so it was kind of like fading in color, and I didn't really like the look of it anymore, so I moved it up here to get more light, but it was too much light. And by the way, when I say I moved it up here, I'm talking like, again, four inches, you know, so right here is full sun, right here is probably bright and direct light, and then literally like four or five inches down, that's medium light. So here, like all the way to here, this is prime real estate for aeroids, and theriums in particular. All my special boys go here. I have my voodoo child that I put onto the wall here. It's a perfect spot for him. And then all the things down here are the dark demonic boys. These are the ones that can thrive in that super, super low light. Not a lot of stuff can grow way down here. I've had things growing down here. Pretty much all of it I've either taken out or it's died because there's just not enough light down there, guys. It's what it is. And if you make your own terrarium, you will find that there might be certain areas of the terrarium that you just can't really plant a plant. Or if you plant big leafed anthuriums up here, you can't really place anything down there, you know? So you have to play around with it a little bit. Oh, and then final con, just because it's a terrarium and it's high humidity and it, you might think it's paradise on earth, in this dry ass apartment for these aeroids, <laughs> rot and fungal and all that stuff can still occur. I mean, I put my dress Larry in here. The dress Larry that I rehabbed from a chunk. I was so proud. I was like, oh, let me put it in here. It'll love it. Nope, it was too humid. It wasn't used to the change. It didn't like the change. Dress Larry's are pretty difficult for most people. And yeah, it didn't like the terrarium. It probably, it was too moist and it got root rot. And then it got chunk rot. And I tried and tried and tried to cut it out and, and rehab it and cut more out and rehab it again. It just, and it eventually died. <laughs> but I have another one now, so it's all good. But I'm not putting it in here. No, 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 no. I've gotten some really nice wishlist plants that I would love to put in here. I'm going to eventually down the road take cuttings and put them in here. So that way if the cuttings crash, I still have the mama plant. Okay, so now, now we fix the hair as we move on to things I would do differently if I could redo it. There's not a whole lot of stuff. Right off the bat, I would have added a lot more pots, like those pots that I potted into the wall so that I could plant more things in here because there's, there's just not enough. <laughs> there's just not enough, guys. So, I mean, I wouldn't have a lot of room for that many more, but I would've added a few extra more, like four or five more if I could help it, just because I'm a little bit greedy and I just want as many plants in here as possible. So that is one thing I would probably do differently. And probably the biggest thing I would do differently, guys, this was one of the major steps in my tutorial, my part one video, and it was without a doubt the most tedious step. So when you spray the spray foam, it dries with a smooth surface. And in order to plant the peat moss, or if you're gonna use sphagnum moss or whatever, I used peat moss, you silicone that, it's not going to stick to the smooth surface. It's going to flake off over time, so you have to carve out the foam, so it gets that kind of grittier, that more porous surface, if you will, so you can silicone the peat moss to that. You don't have to do that. <laughs> you don't have to do that, guys. What you do to get rid of that step completely, which was the worst step, it took me like a whole day just to do it, and my arms and fingers and joints and everything were killing me because I was just doing this with, with a knife. You literally just spray the spray foam, and before it dries, you just throw the, the peat moss on it. Make sure you wear gloves, by the way, okay? Going back to the tutorial, make sure you wear gloves for all that stuff, but you just plant the peat moss, just place it on top of the 
foam. And that's it. I don't know why I didn't do that. So yes, that is another thing I would do differently if I could do it again. And maybe I will make another one in the future. Not anytime soon, but maybe, I don't know. I keep saying I will, but honestly, I have no room to put another one. I really wish I did. I don't need that dresser though. Can I put one there? No, I need clothes. Do I need clothes though? I don't think I do. Oh, and that's it. And we're down to the final thoughts. So yeah, guys, I would say at the end of the day, drum roll, brrrr, totally worth it. I have absolutely no regrets. I am so glad that I did this. I honestly was getting so sick and tired of looking at a bunch of plants lined up in a freaking cabinet. It just looked so weird. I get the initial appeal of turning these into greenhouse cabinets. It was a really nice aesthetic to your space, to your home. But honestly, like with all the cubbies that people put in their terrariums and all the the shelving, it just, it's just too much for me and I, I just, I don't like it. I really don't like it. And I didn't want to do that to mine. So I was just like, fuck it. Let's just turn the whole thing into a jungle. <laughs> because this guys, for me, it's so much more beautiful to look at than the cabinet filled with plants. It just looks more deliberate. It looks so whimsical. It's almost like I have this window into this jungle world or something. This garden that I created for myself. You know, like I said, I don't have any land. I don't have any backyards or anything. So I have to bring the outdoors indoors. And that is what I did here. So yes, guys, that is the six month update. Uh, let me know if you would like any other types of updates on the cabinet. If you want an updated tour of all the plants that are currently in the cabinet, let me know. Or if there's some other aspect, maybe like if you want me to do a whole video on how I care for it, uh, how I maintain it, all that stuff, um, let me know in the comments. Also, any other video ideas, you know, always feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm very active on Instagram, so yeah, thank you all for watching this hot mess. My mouth is so dry, I, I'm, I'm surprised that I was able to get through all that talking. <sighs> all right, I'm gonna go to the movies. I'm going to see a show called The Creator. I heard it's good. I'm gonna go see it in IMAX. All right, I gotta go, guys. Bye-bye. Oh! oh.